Hi, I'm Megan Wonderly Colby, the annual Giving and Membership Coordinator here at the Rutherford B. Hayes Presidential Library and Museums. In today's Museum Minute, we are talking about moving the bodies of Rutherford and Lucy Hayes from Oakwood Cemetery to Spiegel Grove. Rutherford and Lucy used to be buried at Oakwood Cemetery in Fremont, Ohio. But when their son, Colonel Webb Cook Hayes, was looking to found this museum, it was in process of being built, uh, construction was happening. He also wanted their bodies to be moved here to Spiegel Grove. So this would be almost a one-stop shop site of pilgrimage for visitors to visit and pay their respects to Rutherford and Lucy. So he decided that he was going to move the bodies of his parents here to Spiegel Grove. This was not his first time uh, experiencing moving a body. He had helped get George Krogan's body moved to Fremont, Ohio, where he defended the Battle of Fort Stevenson. Um, his father, Rutherford, had actually moved the body of his youngest son, Manning Force Hayes. So moving bodies may seem kind of weird to us today, but it was more common at that time period. But even so, not all of the Hayes children agreed with Webb's plan to move the bodies. In particular, his brother, Rutherford Platt Hayes, was fiercely opposed to this plan. He stated that their parents had picked Oakwood Cemetery as their burial site and not Spiegel Grove. And so he wanted to get an attorney involved to fight Webb moving the bodies. Now, obviously that didn't happen. You know, it didn't go the way Rutherford Platt wanted. His parents were still moved here. But moving them here it was actually a pretty exciting thing. So, newspapers across the country found out that Webb was going to move his parents' bodies. It was pretty exciting to them, the idea of digging up the former president and first lady and having them reinterred. So newspapers across the country, in Boston and Waco and Wisconsin and Iowa, all over, they were talking about moving the bodies. In 1915, Webb had plans to open the museum on his dad's birthday in October. However, on March 31st of that year, he found out that there were laws outlawing the exhuming of bodies, digging them up in the warm months, which started in April. So in one day, he gathered a team of people to dig up his parents in Oakwood and move them to Spiegel Grove. However, because it was such short notice, their new burial site was not ready at Spiegel Grove. So for several days, Rutherford and Lucy were kept here in the vault of the museum in the basement. So a few days later, in early April, Rutherford and Lucy were reinterred at their new resting place on the knoll at Spiegel Grove, where you can see them today. The following are diary entries from Lucy Elliott Keeler, uh, the president's cousin, uh, retelling her story of, or her retelling of moving the bodies to Spiegel Grove from Oakwood Cemetery. Webb and the workmen had been early to Oakwood and the casket stood side by side in the crypt of the memorial building, covered with flags. However, Webb soon decided to move them to the adjoining vault, and that was done. The flag draped in two handsome wreaths. Then the vault doors were closed and we went to the house for dinner. Present, Webb and his wife, Bertrand and his wife, Dr. and Mrs. Wright, myself, Miss Crocker, the housekeeper, and the workmen. All done quietly, quickly, and in Webb's masterly manner. Then, when this is now them moving the bodies to the new knoll resting place. Soon, Bertrand came running, asking me to bring my Kodak and go up to Hayes Avenue and take a picture of the great stone Webb has brought from Bar Vermont Quarries, it weighs 25 tons, 15 by 12 feet to cover the new grave on the knoll of Spiegel and serve as the base to the monument now at Spiegel. I took several views of it and the people.